Hi, and welcome to our last in the series on the Grove. And today we're going to talk about the most interesting and least known thing about groves, and that's called the flush. Whenever you see new growth on an orange grove, on a tree, or any kind of tree for that matter, you'll see there's the dark green uh, leaves that are more mature, and then there's the bright green ones. Those are the new ones, and that is called the flush. I have no idea where the expression comes from, but it's really interesting, and it shows new growth. And there's good news and there's bad news with the flush. The good news is the things you've been doing are giving growth. You're seeing new growth, new parts of the tree. It's getting bigger, taking in more energy, and it's a sign that things are going well. And that's the good news. But there's less than good news, too, because the flush is exactly where the enemy likes to come. The ants, the insects, mold, uh, other creatures, they always like to eat the tender parts, which is the flush, the new growth. So that's where we are today in, in the grove. And we want to see how the flush, when there's new growth for you and for me spiritually, that there is the time not only for celebration, but cause for concern. We're going to be looking at Jesus in Matthew 25, where he says, at that time, Matthew 11, 25, he says, at that time, he's about ready to give us the important message, but he wants us to sort of know a few things before that. So we want to take the, a look at the context before that in this passage, where he starts out in Matthew 11, where John is in prison, and jo that's John the Baptist. He's been thrown in prison, and he wants to know, are you the one or not? You know, he's the first one who gave indication, pointed out to everybody and say, look, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And he said to Jesus, I should be baptized by you. But John comes to a point, he's in prison, and he says, are you the one? It's sort of like the movies, The Matrix with Neo, the Lord of the Rings with Frodo Baggins or or Star Wars with Luke Skywalker. Are you the one who's going to change everything? Are you the one we are to expect? Expecting is waiting in anticipation, anxiety, sort of sitting on the edge of your seat. John is saying, are you really the one we are to expect? Or is there someone else? Maybe that's where you are, that you've been uh, you had a time of growth, and now you're sort of put away, hidden, and you're wondering, Jesus, are you really the one? And Jesus comes back and says, in, in a comparison of the generation, he says, I want to tell you a story, a parable, about what this generation is like, what the people around him were like. He says, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, he is a glutton and a drunkard, the friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus says, you know, I can't please everyone. I do the things that I do. I am who I am. I'm God incarnate. I'm God, fully God, fully man. And no matter what I do, people are going to find fault with him. And that's what he's saying. He didn't try to hide from our culture. He didn't say, oh, it's evil and I'm going to walk away and go live somewhere where there's no people. No, he engages culture. He comes right in the midst of it. And he does sit with tax collectors and sinners, people just like you and me. He goes on to say and denounce the towns of the miracles. He had been to towns, he had done miracles. Why? He wanted to show who he was, that he was God incarnate, God and man put together, fully God, fully man. And he says that he did these things so people would see him and also that they would then take action and repent, that they would change the direction of their lives. And after this, this is where we come back to the, where we started. And Jesus says, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Why? Because you have hidden these things from wise and learned and revealed them to little children. He says three things. First of all is praise. Praise is like putting a spotlight on something. Jesus says, God, I praise you. I want to put the spotlight on you. I want people to see you. Why? Because these things are hidden. People closed their eyes. They turned away. They didn't want to see. The miracles were all there. People never said, well, the miracles aren't true. They saw them and they hid their eyes. There was praise to be in light, 
but they hid, they closed their eyes, they went into darkness. To, and then finally it's to reveal, to uncover, to expose those things to light, to expose not only what he did, but where people's hearts are. Yes, Father, Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty six. 26, for this is what you were pleased to do. It pleased, it delighted, it makes God happy, it makes Jesus happy to do these things. Can you imagine Jesus being happy? Can you imagine it being delightful to God? And why was it a delight? What pleased him? To hide these things from wise and learned, learned people. You know, it's the smart people who can't see it because they think in arrogance that they've got it all together. I've been there. I raised my hand, guilty as charged, because I thought, I can live my own life. I can fix my problems. I realize I've got a hole in my heart, and there's a problem. All things, Jesus says, have been committed to me, Matthew eleven twenty-seven, 27, by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the son chooses to reveal. There are two important words here, committed and revealed. Committing is the idea of giving over to, uh, allowing. It is committed to Jesus. He was committed to showing who he was. He was destined to do that, to hand it off and to reveal. That is to uncover, that's to pull back the curtain. It's like when the bride pulls her veil up to show herself to her husband. He says, I'm going to reveal these things. Jesus finally says to the answer in the flesh of life, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. New trees, new growth. There's a lot of new growth. It, it puts a drain on energy. It's It comes out, and there is this new growth. There is the flesh, but there is the weary and burdened life both its active and passive, the human side of life and misery. You see, smart and powerful people don't ask for help. The weak people, that's me, that's you. We are wearied and burdened. We've been pushing out, we've been pushing growth, and we're tired, and we need rest. Rest to stop, to become refreshed, to continue in the rest. My favorite, One of my favorite expressions of the three most precious words in the English language are, Mama needs a break. And we've just come off a holiday. I feel refreshed. Jesus says, in the press of life, in producing growth and growing life, you need a rest. He goes on to say, you want to get rest? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Jesus says, in the flush of life where there's growth and there's not only the new growth, but then there's all the problems that come with it. We need to learn from him. We need to be taught, instructed. Are we learning from Jesus? Are we turning to him to say, I don't have answers to life. I don't have answers to the problems of my life. I need to learn from you because you are gentle and humble. This idea of gentle and humble is not really gushy. It's not all flowers and songs. It's tough. Gentle and humble is getting down in the dirt of life where things happen, lifting and burden, uh, where we're burned down. We're saying, God, I can't lift it up. You've got to lift it up. My soul needs rest. And Jesus says, you can find it. No more checklists of things that I've got to accomplish to make God love me, to make me feel like his son or daughter to accomplish that, not just feel it, but the reality. Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. It's light and easy, Jesus says. It's that he is the one who will do the heavy lifting. We are the ones who, when we put ourselves under his authority, that we get the light and easy part. He's the one that does the heavy lifting. The yoke of Jesus, he's the one. When you and I have the, the bricks of life are piling up on top of us, where we feel like we can't lift anymore, we can't take another step. Jesus says, put that on me. That's who I am. That's why I came. Take my yoke on you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. 
and you will find rest for your souls. Oh boy, I want to take a shower in that sometimes in the burden where life is pressing in, where people are making demands, where people say, you owe me this, where organizations say, give me this, give me your time, give me your money. Jesus says, I will give you myself. Maybe you've heard the expression or the verse, the promise, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And boy, that sounds like great. I'm somehow going to get pump up my muscles and do it. But in that verse right next to it, Paul talks about the secret of living in the grove and the flush of life, of doing all things. How does he do it? Paul says, I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every and any situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in plenty or in want. You see, we're going to get that plenty. We're going to get that want. It's all going to come at us. It's coming like a freight train. And the point of life with the yoke of Jesus is to say, there will be times of growth. There will be times when the enemy then comes. There will be the ups. There will be the downs. There will be the sideways. There will be times when you think, oh, I am just so out of it. I don't have enough to make it. Maybe that's the way you feel about your health. Maybe that's the way you feel about your, uh, your money situation. Maybe that's the way you feel about a relationship that has gone sour. Jesus says, I understand. And I can walk with you through this. And you see, that is just the opposite of life here in the 21st century. We think there's nothing wrong. I can do it. I can make it all happen. Jesus says just the opposite. You can't make it. You can't lift it up on your own. You've got to turn it over to me. And that begins with a first time commitment to say, God, I'm going to start walking towards you. It's a journey. And you need to give him your life. And maybe you're not ready to give him all of your life, but maybe you're willing to say, Jesus, I'm willing to put my toe in the water with you. Would you walk with me? I want to move towards you because it's just not working. Or maybe you've done that. Maybe you've committed your life to Christ. And there are areas of your life you just say, you just feel so uncomfortable, so burdened down to say, it's time. It's time. It's time for new growth. It's time for giving those areas over to God to say, you know, here's a room in my house. I've invited you into my house, but you can't go into that room. Now is the time to open up the room. Now is the time to unlock it. Jesus is a gentleman. He only goes where he's invited. So please, I, I can just tell you from my own personal life, when I have opened up those dark areas of life, and said, Jesus, I'm, I'm tired of the burden. I need new growth, that he will come in and open it up. The area that has just been the most uh, humbling and the most painful, and yet the biggest growth for me personally is the idea that I don't know everything, that I can't handle everything, that I can't juggle all the balls in life. Maybe that's where you are, and I want to encourage you. I want to really energize you by God's Spirit to say it's now time to give it to Him. Would you pray with me? Our Father and our God, I thank you that your desire is to give us new growth and to protect us from the evil of that growth. And we need to give it to you in this time. We thank you for who you are in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for listening and following us through this series on The Grove. We'll be starting a new series next week. God bless. Bye-bye.